I've said in previous videos that computers are really fast idiots. Let's pretend for a second that we humans are the really fast idiots. Actually, we're idiots, but we're not really fast. Anyway, let's say we we're going to write some code for us humans to execute. And just like computers, we do exactly what we're told. No ifs, ands, or buts. Just follow the instructions exactly. All right, I have a workbench here. And you can see on the workbench, I have some various tools here. We have a saw level. Here's some nails. You have any idea? All these tools. And we want to write a program to tell a human to nail these two boards together. We want to bind them together using a nail. All right, well, what would we say? We say, okay, pick up nail, grab nail, put nail on board, line up the boards, grab hammer, start hitting the nail with the hammer until the nail's all the way through. And that's great. We can use that same code to nail various pieces of board together, call that function over and over. And as long as the nails are here and the hammer's here, everything's hunky-dory. But let's say we called a different function that used these tools to do some various action, and that function was stupid and didn't clean up after itself properly, and it swapped the saw with the hammer. We turn around and call our function and say, oh, we need to nail some more boards together. Uh, grab the tool that's sitting right here and use it to nail the nail into the boards. The tool that should be sitting right here is the hammer. But it's not the hammer. The function we called before didn't clean up after itself. It didn't maintain state. It put the saw there. But of course, we're humans. We're stupid. We're just following the code as it's written. Grab the saw. Let's go. Yeah, obviously there was a problem. Whatever function screwed up did not maintain the invariant. The invariant in this case is that the hammer belongs here. The saw belongs here. Oh, by the way, all these other tools belong in their respective places. Okay, we have to maintain that invariant. Invariant is a technical term. It's one of many terms we'll see throughout this playlist. By the way, each technical term you learn raises your salary, various from $100 to $1,000 a year. So the more technical terms you learn, the better. Technical terms also help you sound smart as, as long as you use those technical terms in the right location. Anyway, we're discussing invariant. So I googled invariant here, and it says, in mathematics, an invariant is a property held by a class of mathematical objects which remains unchanged when transformations of a certain type are applied to the objects. Okay, that's good. Programming is slightly mathematical, so I kind of I like this definition. Ooh, here's another definition. In computer science, an invariant is a condition that can be relied upon to be true during execution of a program or during some portion of it. Right, it's slightly technical, but let's go back to this, this tool example. The invariant in this case is when I call a function in my human program, the function knows exactly where the saw is, exactly where the level is. All the tools are in their right place. It doesn't change. What does in mean? Like if someone tells you you're incompetent, you tell them to go stick it in their ear. You're not incompetent, but incompetent is the opposite of competent, which means you know what you're talking about. You're not incompetent. Incapable. Some people will tell you you're incapable. You are capable. When people tell you that you're incapable, you tell those people to eh, because you are capable, you can make this happen. All right? So in is opposite. What does variant mean? Let's consult Google again. Variant, a former version of something that differs in some respect from other forms of the same thing or from a standard. Basically, variant is a long form of very, which means change. Right? If we're invariant, we don't change. All right? Now, let's, let's go back to this tool example here. While my function is executing, yes, it may pick up the hammer, and it may pick up a nail. And during execution of that function, the hammer can hammer in this nail. No problem. The function can change anything it wants to while that function executes. But once the function returns, it must put everything back in its proper place. That's the invariant. And they're so critical in software engineering and computer science in general. Because if you cannot rely on the state to be exactly what you expect that state to be, how can you write code against that? Right? You end up cutting off your hand. Not ideal. Don't do that. So not only can you rely on an invariant when a function begins, for example, using the tools here, but you must also maintain that invariant when the function returns. When the function returns, all the tools are back in their proper place. The next time we call the function, we know exactly where everything is. Boom, we can go. Invariant, not varying, not 
changing. Maintain that state. Don't cut your hand off. We're going to look at how invariants apply to our very first algorithm here, the linear search. We use it throughout the rest of the playlist. Tell me in the comments, which invariants do you like to maintain throughout your lifetime? Do you expect your toothbrushes to be in a certain location? Maybe there's soap and shampoo in the shower. Or maybe you're like me, you don't maintain any invariants and you end up spending most of your time looking for things. For example, your keys. Maybe you can't locate those and you put them in the fridge. Tell me in the comments and don't forget to like the video.